Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of The Boundless Show. And even though last week was officially the start of September, now we're past Labor Day. And so uh, happy September, but not happy fall yet. That's not until September 22nd, y'all. So don't even steal it from me. I'm just saying. (laughs) All right. Well, here we are for our roundtable. And I have got Bailey, Alex, and Linda here. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Hey. Good to have you. Talking about, we're going to throw out the question today, should you consume romantic content? And we're saying romantic because everyone here is going to say, yeah, uh, you know, don't watch porn, don't watch like <laughs> overtly inappropriate stuff. But um, what about Pride and Prejudice, y'all? Because I can do five and a half hours of that, okay? Whatever. So, you know, fight me on it if, if you want to. So we're going to have this conversation around, and we'll just, we're loosely calling it romantic content. Maybe we're going to have to define this, um, or at least our different variations of it, and talk it through. But um, let's go ahead and start by just generally throwing it out there and say, where are you on the romance scale? And this can be movies, TV, songs, you know, whatever, however this plays out. Are you a hopeless romantic or are you more pragmatic? I am so romantic. You are? Through and through from okay. when I was very young. Okay. I remember seeing the scene and it was, this is a weird movie to feel romance in, but Alfred and the Chipmunks 2, <laughs> when Alvin <laughs> sees the chipette for the first time. Oh, and the, I want to know. <laughs> when that song played for the first time i was like they get it they get me this is exactly what i want to feel okay so from a young age i've been romantic we now could be friends alex because for me it is beverly hills chihuahua let's go i love her <laughs> she gets lost in mexico yeah. and he has to go and rescue her that's right her little chihuahua boyfriend underrated, love it. underrated movie for sure so George Lopez. so underrated yeah. okay good Good thoughts. Now, turning to more normal responses, <laughs> hopefully Bailey and Linda can weigh in. Um, I would say also, like, I'm very romantic. Love, love, love. Love movies, songs, books. I love them all. And I would say it probably started because of Disney, you know, Beauty and the mm. Beast, Little Mermaid, mm-hmm. all those kinds of movies where you just kind of see that cute little romance story and you kind of growing grow up being like wow i want that you know Mm -hmm. they did their job okay (laughs) that makes sense how about you linda i'm probably a little more pragmatic in that area i i like a good love story but for me it has to be mixed with some drama Mm-hmm. and not the main focus of things. Okay. So you don't have like 24 Hallmark movies in your queue of just <laughs> no. like going through them Christmas and okay. I well, watch them, but well, they're not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> there. You just like the ones that have, you know, extremely intricate plots of drama and intrigue mm-hmm. and action. Those, yes. those Hallmarks. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Um, so what, what do you guys think it is? about that because again I feel like I'm in the same place of like especially well I alluded to Jane Austen I mean anything that's like a period piece I'm just all over it I just Mm -hmm. think that's fun I think fun banter and dialogue is great Um, but clearly you know other even all the ones where you know the plot is so formulaic and Mm -hmm. you know you know I've joked about it on Boundless where it's like it's it's a better romance if they hate each other first and then in the span (laughs) of 90 minutes Somehow they're going to come around, you know, <laughs> like, what is it about that, you guys, that you think is so like, where's the draw in that? I think I love happy endings. Mm. Like, mm. I just feel like I'm a very joyful person. I don't like to be sad. I don't like movies where, you know, the main character dies or something. Um, so I think the draw for me is that they meet, they fall in love, they're happy. And there's just this cute story about how that all happens. And I just love seeing that. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. I don't even <laughs> I don't know the poll. Because uh, I, I mean, I also like sad movies. I remember when Bridge to Terabithia came out, probably the saddest movie ever. I just could stop watching it for some reason. I just loved it. Loved the sadness. But I also, like, yeah, love romance. And I don't know what it is. It's probably something deep uh, in my personality. Probably something as well about being human mm-hmm. and having that, you know, spark put in us by the Lord to want marriage and to want intimacy not even just in marriage, but also with him mm-hmm. uh, having that, you know, express itself in mm-hmm. wanting to enjoy other people's romance stories is probably mm-hmm. what it is. That's good. 
And I think those stories, the movies we watch, are reflective of the gospel story, of God's pursuit of us. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty in, I think, some of these, the movies, is that it just is a reflection of what our heart desires. And we love that. Mm -hmm. We love Mm -hmm. seeing that played out in the big screen, played out in a song, in in a book that we read. Yeah. I think that's very true in the sense of, because I... I think to myself like, yeah, what are the ones that really that I'm drawn to? And it's always the one where there's some kind of either hardship to overcome or Mm -hmm. someone who has to stand for something against all odds, you know, and then it becomes like the person, you know, you're, you're just drawn to that person. And I think especially, you know, for, well, I mean, kind of men want to be that guy. And then women just always think of that guy of like, yeah, "Yeah, he just stood in the face of opposition and he did what he needed to do and whatever, which again, Mm -hmm. is a retelling of the gospel. So Mm -hmm. a lot of this uh, does come back, uh, does come back to that in the hero sense of things. Okay, well, let's talk romance in, in terms of you know, I kind of started off our discussion by saying, okay, you know, we're not talking about something particularly like sinful or seedy Mm -hmm. or whatever. But I think, you know, if any of us, and this is not me, has the 50 to 100 hallmarks in our queue, and we're just binge (laughs) watching them or whatever, (laughs) there's problematic elements with that. I mean, I think we can agree. But what What does it look like? Like, do you ever check yourself of like, am I getting like a little too into this? Or has this kind of started consuming my time and attention? How do you know when that's come about? Hmm. I think you can tell if it's taken too big of a part in your life. If you, if it changes how you start to think about love. Mm -hmm. I think that's where I've struggled is um, when I watch all these movies where love is a feeling and a feeling alone. Mm -hmm. And that feeling carries you through to commitment and through marriage. And while you're married, you know, it's like, as soon as they get married, the the screen goes to the circle and Mm -hmm. then the movie ends and (laughs) hooray. Uh, Because it's all easy after that. Exactly. (laughs) Why bother? Yeah. So when that, when I just, when that was my entertainment diet, I started to think of love as that, as a feeling Mm -hmm. and really what it could make me feel. How can my spouse make me feel? And that was like difficult when I was learning uh, how to date my now wife and Mm -hmm. getting married, kind of deconstructing that image of love um, was pretty difficult. So probably when your definition of love is defined by your 150 Hallmark movies, Mm -hmm. that's probably when you need to get rid of a couple Mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to bounce off that, like I kind of started noticing, um, Like, I feel like until you notice it, you may not realize that that's a habit you have. Um, But I realized I was, like, judging people based on, like, oh, well, they're not, like, writing me a love letter or they're not Mm -hmm. taking me (laughs) the spontaneous picnic on the beach, you know. Snowball fight. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And being Uh like, wow, is there something wrong? Maybe he doesn't like me as much as I thought he did. But just realizing that let's not real life. Like, you're going to have fun times, but that's not going to be every day. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be every single date. Um, so just realizing that they're fun to watch, but they're not reality is one thing that I had to realize. Yeah. Linda, maybe you can comment on that a little bit because, you know, in addition to just being someone that we asked to talk about romance, you're also a a counselor and have tread a lot into this space. What are some of the, um, unrealistic expectations? Like how do you guard against unrealistic expectations knowing that, Real life relationships are not yeah. always just, you know, like they are played out on screen. Right. We, well, we all long for that happily ever after. That's mm-hmm. the thing that w- draws us to them. And what I find in, in like the rom-com genre there is that they prevent us actually from true love in real life. Mm. Because what happens is um, we kind of, there's there's the good and the bad, right? When we start to obsess about things, that's when in our brain, the chemicals, the dopamine, it, it, it kicks in. Like we all love the racing heart, the sweaty palms, the excitement, you know, the flushed cheeks, all the emotions, the passion, along with anxiety, which can be good. It's not always bad. But the downside of that, of the dopamine in our brain, it's that obsessive compulsive. It's the fear. It's the loneliness. It's the depression. It's the social judgment, the low self-esteem. When it doesn't turn out like the movie shows Mm -hmm. us, the book tells us, Mm -hmm. um, when we don't get what we anticipate should come, Mm -hmm. it's that false expectation. Yeah, that's good. Um, would you say that, I mean, again, 
you know, and anyone can comment here. Like, for example, I mean, none of us like watch a movie or listen to a song and, and are like, you know, OK, well, let me just think objectively of how this might be affecting <laughs> me and or yeah. dopamine hits my brain and stuff like that. So what does it look like for you to enjoy stuff as entertainment or feel because I think there's a lot of you know there's a lot of emotional connection we'll have I mean I can think of a song from like you know when I was in high school and all of a sudden I'm like oh man that one you know whatever and it really does have an effect on you Mm -hmm. in enjoying it without getting so caught up in you know thinking of like how is this affecting me for good or for bad or whatever is I mean do you have to like neutralize yourself on that Mm. I think I just let myself enjoy it and just be in the moment, like enjoy the movie, enjoy the book. But if I do like outside of that, catch myself being like, wow, I really wish I had that. I'm kind of reframing it to like be a chance to like pray for my future husband Hmm. and um, pray for the person that he is and that I will recognize that and not compare it. So I think it's just, yeah, like enjoy it, but don't let yourself dwell on it and let it shape your desires outside of it is Mm -hmm. what I would say. Mm Mm-hmm. I think it has to start with knowing what true love is and knowing really just what truth is in general too, Mm -hmm. being informed about what the Bible says about marriage, what the Bible says about love. Mm -hmm. It has to start there because as human beings, we're going to be, we're going to have a worldview Mm -hmm. just regardless. And so if our worldview is informed by the Bible, we can now watch those movies and weigh them Mm -hmm. with the word and weigh them with what God says love is. Mm -hmm. And if we see something in a movie or hear something in a song that doesn't line up with scripture, we can acknowledge that. We can say, hey, that was really, hey, the the visuals in that movie was really good. Like, love the story, but that's not the story of my marriage. That's not the story of the marriage that um, God has given me and Mm -hmm. he has told me to steward in this way. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of acknowledging that it has to start with the word. It has to start Mm -hmm. with where you get your truth from. Because if your diet is only those Mm rom-coms, you're going to believe that that's reality. And then you're going to be really disappointed Mm -hmm. when you eventually find out that they are not real. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I don't want to negate the fact that, I mean, how many of us can think of movies that we watch that, you know, even if the romance is super sappy, there isn't some kind of problematic element in it. And I mean, this is a great opportunity to mention Focus on the Family's Plugged In because I know many Mm -hmm. of you go to Plugged In and use it, everything from counting F-bombs to the amount of sexual content in it. But I mean, like really, when was the last time you watched a movie short of a Disney animated movie where people at some point don't have sex in the film? And I think even we as Christians were like, okay, well, we got to just, you know we have to just put that aside because there's no way you can get a movie that doesn't have that. And I'm not talking about, we don't have to be extreme like 50 shades or something, but just that kind of the wearing on you of like, this is an expectation within a movie. Do you guys find yourself having to finally say like, okay, like at this point, this kind of movie I can't watch or this, I have to fast forward or how do you determine your own boundaries in that? Golly, that's tough. I think it really, gosh, I think it just depends on the film too, depending on the person. For me personally, I just can't watch a sex scene. Mm -hmm. I just can't. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can handle it if they're like going into the bed and then they're like, wake up the next morning. I'm like, okay, I know what happened, but (laughs) I know you're not married, but (laughs) fine. I'll let us slide. know what happened, Alex. (laughs) Come on. I know what you're insinuating. They just... Um, they just read comic books and whatever <laughs> and had the flashlight under the yeah no. uh, if only okay. if only <laughs> uh but i mean the same with books too because i know it's a lot of like fantasy novels or yeah you know, like ya novels will do that too they'll have like a sex scene or two it's easy to skip might as well mm-hmm. uh that's my line i think also you know it depends it's hard to say like oh it just depends on your conscience because your conscience can be dulled and so like if i consistently you know let those sex scenes play my conscience might be dulled and i might be making an unhealthy decision by not taking a hard stand so Mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to leave it just to your conscience i think that's why it's always helpful to first of all take a look at the word what does it say about entertainment does it say that you should make compromises for entertainment Mm -hmm. oftentimes i see us crucifying our flesh rather than feeding it Um, and then second community you know just asking your people hey what do you guys think about this i really don't know what to do Mm -hmm. yeah um 
I don't know. I usually fast forward. It just kind of depends on the movie, um, which, like you said, like, it's kind of hard, like, with the conscience and stuff. But um, I don't know. I think fast forwarding is just, like, the safe way because then you're not letting your imagination roam and you're not, like, putting things in your head that may or may not be realistic, you know? And, um, but I know we talk a lot about, like, sex scenes in movies, but one thing that really bothers me about um, a lot of popular movies today, especially aimed at teen girls, is that toxic traits are glorified Mm -hmm. and, like, romanticized. Mm -hmm. Like, you see people in these really toxic relationships where one of them may be alcoholic or, um, or possessive or manipulative, and Mm -hmm. they're the desirable one. They're the one that people, like, really are going after, and they're the one they end up with and that just kind of bothers me because being in a toxic relationship prior like to moving here um it really is like detrimental and it's not something that is like desirable you know what I mean yeah Yeah. no that's so true and even in the even in the sense of like in lesser ways like it seems like especially with men in movies it's always the like dark brooding mm-hmm. unavailable one and kind i'm like rude too. who else yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i'm like where else would that be seen as desirable like mm-hmm. you know and it's always the assumption the girl is always like oh it's okay i can reach him you know yeah. i can change him uh-huh. i can whatever mm-hmm. and i'm like that's like against every like relationship 101 of like don't sign up for the projects don't be the one that yeah. you know is the one that's going to fix yeah. someone um And I would imagine, Linda, that that would be, I mean, you probably see a fair amount of the effects of that kind of glorification of bad traits, you know, in people who want relationships and, in fact, are settling for something like that. Right. A lot of the people I see, it's because they come in because of those misconceptions Mm -hmm. um, that they see in the love and romance kind of movies or or songs or books again. And it's kind of like coming in to saying, well, if someone really loved me, they would know what I'm thinking without me saying it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of those misconceptions. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, it's my destiny, my fate. Like we've talked about um, that I will just fall in love and it will happen rather Mm -hmm. than love is actually a choice. Mm -hmm. We choose love each and every day in terms of when we're married and really understanding what that biblical view of marriage is. Mm -hmm. Um, We get distorted with what the world offers us because we often spend more time there Mm -hmm. than we spend studying Mm -hmm. what God says about marriage. And Mm -hmm. um, our first love is him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it is so funny. I think of this in, especially in terms of songs, you know, usually because they're like three minutes long of like whoever says anything about a person that's ultimately valuable, valuable or character based in a song. It's all just about if someone mm, yeah. is hot or <laughs> funny so or, or, yeah, it's just like weird. Or like I how mean, they make me feel. Like yeah. you make me feel this, you make yeah. me feel that. So then yeah. when you're with someone that yeah, you're yeah. with them for a long time, they may not make you feel that way anymore. And you're like, oh, this probably isn't love then. Yeah, yeah that's but wild. Infatuation versus mature love, mm-hmm. which, you know, we talk about in terms of there's angst in that beginning right all the ups and downs and the roller coaster that love is um but after a couple years it actually calms down Mm -hmm. and we see that um in relationships and the stress is often gone and it turns from that what we talk about a passionate love to actually compassionate love Mm -hmm. which is so much more meaningful Mm -hmm. in the long term Hmm. Okay, so that said, you know, we'll we'll end on somewhat of a fun note. Does anyone have any recommendations? I mean, you can tell on yourself if you just want it to be like cotton candy or whatever, but or, you know, one or stories that just have resonated with you or are valuable to you um in this <laughs> You know, I mean, not Alex and my recommendations at the beginning aside. <laughs> you don't have to watch Beverly Hills Chihuahua if you don't want to. We're still, we recommend it, but okay. maybe you don't have to. We sure do recommend it. Um, but what would you say? What are just the ones that you're like, oh, that one just for whatever reason is especially meaningful to you? Uh, mine is About Time. And it is. I don't even it know was, what that is. About Time is a movie starring Domino Gleason and Rachel McAdams. And it's a story. It, if you watch any trailer, it's marketed as just rom com. 
guy mm. meets girl, but he can travel in time. So he uses his time travel to, you know, make the girl fall in love with him and they get married. And when you watch the movie, that's like half <laughs> the movie. I may have just dozed off while you were there, <laughs> But go ahead. I don't continue, blame you. I don't Alex, blame continue with this time traveling business. Okay. Um, so that's like half the movie and then they get married. And then the rest of the movie is about like his relationship with his father and like his relationship with his siblings and responsibility and like... Um, taking each day as it comes and really holding on to it with everything you have and taking it for what it is and kind of um, taking hold of it, I suppose. And so that's my recommendation. Again, back to what you said earlier, there is a sex scene with, and they're not married, okay? Just skip it, you know? Listen, I'm not perfect. This is a compromise. The movie's amazing. <laughs> you just got to skip those three minutes, all right? Okay, we will do. Um, the show Heartland, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of it. Yeah. It's on Netflix. I've been, my family's been watching it since I was in fifth grade and they just renewed for a 16th season. Um, but it, it, it's, it's a love story, but it's also, you know, just there's drama, there's suspense, there's mystery. There's a lot that goes on. It's a family that lives on a ranch in Canada. Um, it's just really sweet. And it kind of goes from that passionate love to compassionate love. Cause you see the main characters like fall in love and get married and, establish this life and have kids and it's just a really beautiful show that's like family friendly so I always recommend that one to people um, and then as far as books go anything by Jody Hedlund is amazing because she does historical fiction like medieval um, like frontier type stories um, but they they're very clean they're very innocent but the books like are very good at showing examples of like sacrificial love and um, yeah I would I always recommend those as well yeah, oh, that's so good. Yeah. Anything you could think of, Linda? I know I'm kind of like at a, I'm trying to think of what, what I, I know I would have some, but I'm kind of at a loss to think of specific examples. Probably Alvin and the Chipmunks too. Other probably. than, <laughs> that's probably, other <laughs> than I mentioned like all the standard Jane Austen stuff, but yeah. I talk about that a lot just because I like, for the, me, that's about like the family structures and the banter and the, like the whole process mm. of like, oh my goodness, are these people ever going to have a semblance of a normal life so <laughs> oh forever my girl is a really good one too there's no bad scenes i don't think there's any language or anything and my family like loves that movie it's probably my mom's favorite okay good good recommendations well you guys thank you so much for weighing in on this conversation this is really fun Thanks. thank you lisa the boundless show is a production of boundless.org focus on the family <laughs>